We all wait for that day when Mr. or Ms. Wright walk into our lives and sweep us off our feet. But for our guest today, their perfect mates live hundreds, even thousands of miles away. Now, uh, when my kids date, uh, if somebody lives that distance, we call it GUD, Geographically Undesirable. These women have been waiting two, six, even 24 months to be reunited with the men that they love. What they don't know, by the way, is that their boyfriends and fiancés are right upstairs and are here to surprise them. So we're going to do some very long-distance love reunions. We have lots of romance and surprises. Let's get started. say the men and women whom they love live miles and miles and miles away. And unlike that saying, absence doesn't necessarily make the heart grow fonder. You know, there's another saying, out of sight, out of mind. Ooh, how unromantic. This is Kimberly. Kimberly met her ex-husband, Bill, over 11 years ago. Was not love at first sight. Uh, but after a while, he began to, uh, the idea began to grow on her, and he became the man of her dreams. Now, you are no longer married. You've been divorced for, what, two years? Two years. Okay, I'll get to that in just a minute. Tell us how you met originally. Uh, originally, I was in ninth grade. He was in eighth. We were in course together. Wow. Um, I thought of him as a brat, sort of. <laughs> so um, One of those younger men, right? Oh, yeah. No, no. We're the same age. He was back a grade. I had been advanced a grade. Right. Um, but we were mainly friends when we first met. And then I moved up to the high school. He stayed in junior high, so we were still just distant friends then. Um, and he came up for 10th grade. I was in 11th, and uh, I saw him, and... I wanted him. <laughs> and, oh, that's uh, honest of you. So you were sweethearts after the high school. He entered the service, right? Right. And it took a lot of moving around and moving around. And it ain't easy, is it? No. Where, where was he sent? Uh, first, first of all, we graduated together. He took some extra courses to graduate from high school. And uh, he went to San Diego. And my parents moved from Mississippi to Georgia, so I went with them. Um, mainly because I had been in a military family. My father was in the military, so I knew what that was like. And we wanted, I wanted to be stable while he was who knows where. Right. And um, then I would see him occasionally. But a month after, I gra after we graduated, we found out we were pregnant. So he was gone for that, too. Now, there's something you should know. You decided to run away and secretly get married when you were 18. Did anybody know about this? No. You never just, told anyone, but the two of you secretly ran away and got married. Right. Okay. We felt like the uh, the only people that needed to know were he and I. That's all? We were the only important ones. That, so you didn't live together because no one knew, and you got pregnant, and uh, you had a new marriage, a new baby, only 18. What did your mother think of all this? Um, let's say she wasn't too thrilled. That's a nice word to use, I suppose. <laughs> she... Uh, she wasn't really thrilled anyway about me being with him, even just dating him, because she felt like I was too serious at too young of an age. And of course, mother... She didn't know it was too late. Well, true. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Have you ever lived together for any length of time as husband and wife? Not for a long length of time, no, because by the time it, we were able to, it, things were just... I'd lived with my parents for too long, and things just went too so far. So you two got divorced two years ago, right? Right. Then why are you calling each other now? You've been divorced for two years. What's going on? Um, I thought of him. Just out of the blue, I decided to call him. And it took him a while to, uh, to cool out and accept me again. He was a little mad because I had divorced him. And it took a, a little convincing on my part that he should give me another try. So that's what we're working on now. Now, you know he was supposed to join us today, and he was called by the Navy to report to Bosnia. What's it been like being separated from the man you love? It's, um... How long since you've seen him, face to face? <clears throat> two, two years, Since two you've been years. divorced. Do you want to be married to him again? I believe I do. I mean, I'm pretty sure I do. do you, what do you think he thinks? I, he tells me he does, 
but uh, I really don't, I don't know for sure you yet. You don't know, because you can't eyeball each other, right? right? I mean, you can say years. anything over the phone. <laughs> I, I agree. What would you tell him if he were here today? Well... Would you be honest and tell him you would marry him again? Would I be honest? Yeah. I, if, if he asked me, I would tell him yes. Okay. You would tell him. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he would have to say. Bill, come on up. <laughs> Child together, right? Yes. <laughs> How long since you've seen your son? Uh, because of her mother, uh, it's real difficult to to really see. Is mother still uh, angry at Bill, even yes, though you've been divorced? Yes, yeah. uh, I the, would, the, His I, name is like a dirty word in my family. <laughs> I'll tell you. What, I'll tell you this, Sally. Um, when I come home on leave and when I'm not overseas. Uh, I connive with her father. Her father and I are, are pretty good. And uh, he'll take him somewhere, McDonald's or something. We'll see. I spend a lot of time with him. But the thing is, he looks, a lo he looks just like me. You know, he's and a six the mother hates him? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. He's a six-year-old version of me. And, I, and I've, you know, I have my mannerisms. And right. she says that he'll get mad, stomp his feet, go run to his room, slam the door, get these bill faces. And it pisses her mother off. <laughs> So he has How does the final it feel to say. see Kimberly after two years? <sighs> I'm speechless. I, after all I've been through, after all we've been through, and it's just unbelievable. I love it. Would uh, Kimberly? Did you know he was going to be here today? You didn't seem surprised at, any, at seeing him. Well, I've gotten so used to, we've plan, tried to plan getting together before, and I've gotten so used to plans being called off that I've sort of become numb. When somebody tells me, oh, well, he's not going to show up, it's like, oh, but okay. that's really him. He's sitting there. I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know he heard what you said about wanting to marry him again. We couldn't keep him from hearing that. What are your plans, Bill, for the future? Right now, it's, uh, it, things are kind of rough right now because I really have been going back and forth to Bosnia. I am a Navy SEAL, and uh, those 2 o'clock in the morning phone calls are real bad. Um, I'm in graduate school right now at Mississippi State University, and uh, so I, you know, the Navy has given me a chance to slow down a lot, and hopefully uh, things work well. well. We'll go up there. She's in school right now, and we'll go up there, and we'll, we'll see if we can make it work again. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Now I'd like you to meet Michael. And by the way, it is a pleasure to bring the two of you together, and we wish you the best of luck. Like Bill and Kimberly, Michael hasn't seen the woman he loves. Her name is Yolanda in over two years. Uh, Yolanda will be out in just a minute. Michael, how did you two meet? Well, I was, <coughs> like, like Bill, I was in the military. And, uh, Stationed in Puerto Rico. Where? Uh, Roosevelt Roads. Rosie Roads. Yeah, okay. Rosie Roads, Puerto Rico, yeah. Yes. And uh, I was in security there, and uh, she came up to the gate to get on, to get a pass. And as soon as I saw her, it was like angels, you know, just flying all over the place. <laughs> yeah, you know, that Puerto Rico sky just opened up in the sunshine. And she Wait, did we say men weren't romantic? <laughs> Wasn't this a little conversation we were just having? You were transferred out of Rosie Roads to California. What right. happened? No girl? Well, we made plans together to go to leave Puerto Rico. However, she changed the plans on me. She got a new job, and she felt like, well, I need to get established in this job. Well, I left Puerto Rico earlier than expected, and I asked her to come with me. And she didn't come? She did not come. She did How not long ago come. was this? Two years ago. Have you been a grown-up man like you been carrying that torch for two years? I sure did. I, in a way, yeah. I'm, I'm in Southern California now. You know, what do you think? <laughs> um, but 
I still have that torch inside. And we've been trying continuously to well, get Well, now, wait. If she's gone, is she, is she Puerto Rican yet? Is, is she where? Is she Puerto Rican? Yes, she is. Is she going to stay in her home on her island with her parents, or is she going to go with you? Oh, well, wait a minute now. See? She transferred. She left. Excuse me. She left and went to Florida for a new job. Oh. That was good news. So we got I, her off the island anyhow. Oh, yeah. I thought it was good news for me. But she couldn't come and be with me in California after I made the reservations. Start, I, you know, made all the reservations to fly her out to California, and she says, I can't come because my daughter's having her first baby and I have to go back to Puerto Rico to be with her. All right, now, wait a minute. Have you ever uh, yeah. proposed marriage to I, this lady? On my hands and knees. How? <laughs> and what did she, how, how many times have you proposed? I can't count. I, I mean, I, it was about six or seven, ten, seventeen. I, oh seventeen my God. times? It, you I, gotta I, get off your knees. On the phone. <laughs> on the phone. And it, it was, it was a back what, and forth thing, too. What does she say when you propose to her? Well, at first she was like, okay, sure, let's do it, okay. But then she wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. She didn't know if that's what I wanted. She didn't want to come all the way out to California, and I changed my mind. She left out there stranded. She didn't know. All right, what is this relationship? I don't think you're the kind of guy who would change his mind. I mean, it's been two years of not seeing her. Uh, is she still the woman to marry? How, in, how honorable are your intentions? Well, Sally, again, I've been in Sandy, South Florida, Southern California, and the summertime is really hot, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I haven't met anyone seriously, you know, very, someone that I could really just jump, jump up tomorrow and say, okay, let's get married. And expect, I want to take my time. I haven't seen her in a while. Let's see what happens. I've talked to her over the phone. But it's always been a hit and miss thing, a hit and miss thing. Constantly. You tired of being turned down? Tired. It's the distance. That distance. distance is something else, you know, because you have to deal with. I have Are to deal with that. Are you ready to see her after all this time? <sighs> <laughs> Yolanda, come on out. Yolanda, that was less than passionate. <laughs> How does it feel to see him? Shock. I'm in shock. <laughs> I mean, three days ago, I wouldn't have thought that he was going to be sitting next to me. You know, the like... great thing is that every year you get a new start. There's all kinds of interesting things that can happen to That's you. That's right. Sister Coretta used to say, tomorrow there'll be lots of surprises. I'm a follower of Sister Coretta. <laughs> uh, what have wow. the past two years been like away from him? <laughs> uh, it's, it's been frustrating, um, back and forth. Um, Are you in love with minds. anyone else? Excuse me? Are you in love with anyone else? No. <laughs> no? Okay. No. <laughs> Michael, what do you want to say to her? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I haven't seen you in a while, and I'm really shocked. I, I uh... I still love you, you know? I still love you. Uh, uh, <laughs> the distance is really a big thing. I know. It is. And uh, is there any how do you feel about coming to California? <laughs> In inquiring minds want to know, how do you feel about going to California? If I could, I would, but right now, <laughs> I just got stationed in Key West so for a year, so he might have to wait another year. <laughs> Can't work, huh? We tried, but Do you want us to find like... you somebody else via the magic of television? I'll tell you what, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much active uh, in, in, in San Diego, South, South Southern California. I have, okay. I teach karate out there. I have a couple of karate studios, and <laughs> and uh, Yolanda sounds like she has a job set for her in South Key West, and, and and she's asking me again to wait. And uh, you don't want to wait anymore. I don't know if I can. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 hard. Well, now wait a minute. 
I didn't promise. Why are you telling him to wait? Why? There's a time for everything. Everything has its time. Okay, and if you feel it's not the right time, you feel it's not the right time, wait. It might seem forever now. You but want me going out looking for somebody else for him? And <laughs> they seem perfect. They seem perfect. So, so wait. The time. Wait till the time is right. That's all. I didn't say that all these long distance romances yeah. would work. You know, I didn't. Why can't you move where she is? Because That's I have a business. I have a business back in uh, in California <laughs> that operate. Exactly, right. she has and her that job seems too. to be the problem. It's like every time we want to get together, something comes up. It always it never changes. So up. maybe it was never meant to be. Maybe. 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 <laughs> but see, we haven't let that stop stop us yet. No. Because but maybe we, it's easier to love talking. somebody who's not around. Well, when I was fixing to get married, and I asked my daddy if I should marry my my fiance, and my daddy said. It's not whether you can live with him. It's can you live without him. And I don't like marry that. anyone like like if that. you can like live that. without him. Like Very true. Like We're really I the best of twins. I have really to go are. along with We're what really her father good friends, said. Sally. Right. But We're you're really able to friends. live without each other. Uh, Your heart's got to go patty pat, and you can't live without the person. Sally, I mean, that's the way I feel. I'll tell you something. Backstage. He said nothing, of, uh, nothing else except her. <laughs> he, he talked All right, nothing about we'll it. put it on the table, see what happens as we go along, and we have some other very long distance yeah. love reunions <laughs> when we return. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, Sally, I flew all the way across the country to see Michelle, but she doesn't know I'm here. Can't wait to see the look on her face. Before I often uh, tell my son don't get involved with anyone who's G-U-D, all right? You ever fall in love with the man of your dreams only to find out he lives across the country, across the world? For some people, across town is too much. Well, G-U-D is geographically undesirable. Meet Michelle. Michelle says the moment she met her fiancé, Dwayne, she fell head over heels for him, right? What happened? <laughs> Actually, it was the other way around. <laughs> No, um, I was working at a sporting goods store, and uh, he came in, and I was answering phones, and, and he walked past, you know, and I, and I looked at him, and then he looked at me, and he smiled, and then he just came over, and he talked to me, and we talked, and he gave me his number, and we went out, like, a couple days after. Okay. How long uh, did you date? Uh, six months. And you got engaged when? Uh, before I left Hawaii. All right. What is the problem now? distance. He's where? He's in California. And where are you? Chicago. Uh-huh. Then how are you going to carry on a relationship? Uh, just got to try. That's the only thing I can say. There's, there's just trust and faith and... Now all this happened in Hawaii. Yeah. Did you ever think you'd see this guy again? What, in, after? After you left Hawaii? Well, yeah. I hoped. But I haven't, I haven't seen him yet. Something very special happened before you returned home. What was that? He asked me to marry him. Aww. <laughs> Aww, <that's sweet. laughs> yeah. What's been the hardest part of being apart from Dwayne? Um, I think the hardest part is just the simple things that people take for granted, you know, when, when they're in a relationship, you know, like seeing each other every day, uh, stuff like... Can't you two get to the same town? No, it, it's so hard. You can't. Because of my phone bill. <laughs> my phone, phone bill is a thousand odd dollars. You mean you can't leave town till you've got it cleared up month. your phone bill? Yeah. Well, actually, it was five hundred the first month that I got back. We've been we've been apart like three months, but total it's been a thousand. <sighs> and I'm going into the Air Force now, so I'm gonna be leaving soon. And he's going into the police academy, you know, and that's in California. So we got to meet We don't up. stand much chance here. No. Uh, what would you say to him if I could dial him up on the phone now? What costs a thousand dollars to say to somebody? Just, I love him, and I miss him, and you just got to have a lot of. <laughs> 
Michelle, what are you thinking? I don't, just, I don't know. <laughs> now, what's going to happen with this uh, relationship? I mean, he's going to the police academy. You're going to where? The Air Force? You're going to the Air Force? It's going to last. Okay. Going to make it last. Yeah. Seems to be working all right for me. More long distance love relations, we return. Sally, I flew around the world from England to be with Kim today. She doesn't know I'm here, and I can't wait to surprise her. tell you that our last couple has been kissy pooing all through the <laughs> tire break. Why not? Huh? We approve. Have you ever been separated from a special someone by hundreds, maybe thousands of miles, not knowing when you'd see them again? Yes, anybody? Okay. Meet Kim. Kim and her boyfriend David definitely fall into that class. I think you're going to win the longest distance relationship. Uh, you live in New Hampshire. Yep. Where in New Hampshire? In Nashua, New Hampshire. Nashua? Nashua, New Hampshire. <laughs> he lives in merry old England. He couldn't be with us today, but he's joining us thanks to the BBC. We owe them one on satellite. David? Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Let me come around where I can see you. Kim, let me start with you. Eng England's a long way away. Yeah. How did you meet David? Um, I'm involved in. We're involved in an organization called Drum Corps, and it's um. Is he in one drum corps? Yeah. And you're in another from drum England, corps. And I'm in the one from New Hampshire. So. And you're in the drum corps from New Hampshire. Yeah. Do you Spartan. both play the same kind of drum? Well, I play. We play on um, bugles. <laughs> bugles in the drum corps. Yeah. <laughs> And so his drum corps ran into your drum corps? Yeah, they went, to, they went on tour with us over the summer. They went where we went. Okay. David, what did you think the first time you saw Kim? Well, um, must have been about 40 horn players there, and um, there's one pretty girl. Is he speaking English? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, David. I just, sure. I just like to do that. <laughs> Kim, were you looking to find a special uh, bugler? I mean, what was it about David that attracted you? I don't know. Well, over the summer, like, I was dating someone. So it was like kind of, you know, I, was, I, I didn't want to meet anyone because I was, you know, they live so far away. But then I met Dave and I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> David, what's the hardest part of being so far away? Do you have very long phone bills? Like, we have a $1,000 <laughs> phone bill here. Yeah. You yeah. do? Very long, very long, yeah. Uh huh. Do you yeah. think that she speaks funny? I can't. Pardon? Do you <laughs> There's my answer. <laughs> yeah, Kim, she does. Do you Very think strong. a relationship like this built on bugling can last? Yeah, I think it can. You, th you think it can? Yeah. <laughs> David? Yeah. You're having no problem at this time of night. I know it's quite late in London, right? Uh oh. Sally? Yeah. This is Kit. Uh, we lost Sally. Thank you, Kit. Oh, man. Oh. Kit, what time is it there? Um, it's five uh, hours ahead of us. What? It's eight o'clock there. Eight p.m. Yeah, if it's eight o'clock at uh, in London. Did we have this satellite for a certain given time, or is this company springing for the entire length of the interview, which is like three minutes or something? What happened? Now we've got the, the time's booked, but we've got some kind of interference. I don't know where it's coming from. We'll clear it up as soon as we can. Thank you, Kim. 
What do you miss about not having David close to you? Um, just talking to him and everything about, you know. Right. Kim, we had to tell you a little white lie. <laughs> You did. When you did. Here. Okay. But you never die, you know. Yeah. Welcome back to the States. Oh, no way. I didn't get here. <laughs> yes. Oh, <hi. laughs> I have a question for Michelle. Um, since you're engaged, have you set a, a date for your wedding or anything? No, we haven't. We haven't even discussed it. You're not going to let this go on and on. <laughs> we don't like it when it goes on and on and on, do we? Go ahead. Michael, you seem like a really nice guy. Why are you wasting your time in just one woman? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Not very romantic. I want to answer that question. Um, I don't think he is. In California, yeah, I, I have uh, quite a you few friends. You stated it. I have quite a few friends in California. I do respect her, but I also am patient. I'm looking for something special. She is special. But I, I've been married twice, and I do not, uh, yeah, and I do not want to make that mistake again. So I believe in dating. I believe in seeing okay. other people. Sure, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Stand up. Um, if I was you, I'd stay with her anyway. But first of all, see, you are romantic. <laughs> You're the one who didn't put up his hand when I asked her. No, I'm hardcore. But hey, <laughs> why, why would you say that? No, I'm saying wait for her. He's saying wait. He's saying wait. It's fine. OK. Is it why? I heard somebody in the audience say, well, we look good together. Well, we're that's divided the physical, as to. And, the, and so that's the physical appearance. There's more to it than that. It, you, we have to be able to relate to each other very well. The one OK? Thing, I'll tell you something as well. When the two years, two and a half years that we've been apart, when a divorce was final, I, I started dating again what I could. But for the past six months, she and I, that we've been talking, I haven't seen anyone else. Okay. And, you know, I hope that, you know, these two, you know, can iron out their differences, you know, time-wise, length-wise. And, you know, they look great together. You know, she's, you know, she's got a big smile on her face. You know, I think they can work it out with a little help. Yeah. We're going to find out what hardcore means when we come back. I want Dave. I want Dave. And I had to get together and uh, whoa, whoa. maybe perhaps fly to England and uh, his, his uh, girlfriend. And, Man, you are an adventurer. Can... You are really sure. an adventurer. Stay with us. More long distance reunions. <laughs> yeah. Sally, when I first met Marsha online, I knew she was the one for me. It's been so hard being so far apart. Can't wait to see her again and tell her to her face that I love her. If you've just tuned in, we are reuniting couples who say they're desperately in love. They live miles away. It's long distance. This is to Yolanda. Do you ever have any intentions of marrying him? I mean, he's asking. Well, you really times. want the question. After a guy asked 17 well, times. Well, if we could ever get together, yes. If it could be in the same place. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, no. I'd like to know, um, Dwayne, that's your name, right? Yeah. Um, since her phone bill was like over $1,000, why couldn't you like buy a airplane ticket to come and see her? Yeah. No, that, that's my fault. That's my fault. I call him because I miss him. That's on my bill. That's my responsibility. Okay. Good girl. See, She's I taking the, her own responsibility. But many times too, people so. spend as much in the phone bill as they would in the airplane ticket. Right. Is that right? Go ahead. Um, how long are you two been going out for? Who? You two. Oh. Um, well, we met over the summer, so it's been since the summer. I went to, um, I went to England in, like, after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and then we were just you know, visiting for like, about a week. Do you think that you guys are going to move closer to each other? Well, he's coming down in March to Marsha Spartans. So. <laughs> yes. Um, I just want to know if all these couples are faithful to each other, being living so far away. Very good question. 
Are you all being faithful to each other, living so far away? Sally, it's no. very difficult. It's, it's very, very difficult. It's very difficult. But everyone is saying yes. Go ahead. I just want to say to, um, to, to my beautiful best friend in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, Sophia, hello. And my gorgeous Aunt Sally, hello. Not me. It's another I, I just another Sally. Do you guys all believe in destiny? Do you believe in yeah. destiny? Yeah. 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 Meet Marsha. Marsha says, <laughs> this is a new age. Marsha says when she bought a computer last year, falling in love was not on the program. Marsha, what happened? That's right, Sally. Um, when I, after my husband passed away back in 92, I pretty much was raising my children by myself. And I decided to uh, buy a computer for a social life. And I was cruising the internet one day. Cruising and the internet. Cruising the internet. And I ended up in the Romance Connection, whereas, whereas, which where Daryl found me in the Romance Connection. We um, started talking on the computer. And shortly after, he said, why don't you call me? And I said, fine. OK, so I called him up. And Isn't it spoke. cheaper to email than it is to call? Or? Well, yeah, but it's not the same. It's nice to hear someone's voice, especially when they're. Have you fallen in so well. love with him? You can only email so yes. much. Yes, yes. Has he yeah. fallen in love with you? Yes, he has, Sally. We we. Um, what we is it about his company. style that has made you fall in love with him? Well, basically, he has accepted me and my children as a family unit. And have you ever seen him? Yes, I have. When we, did you see him? The last time I saw him was back in November. Uh -huh. And um, it's just a special time every time we're together. I'm so glad you've seen each other because mm. sometimes when people have it, they come on the program and it makes us crazy because they yeah. are, you know, they never are what they expect. You ready to see Daryl again? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> come on out, Daryl. <laughs> This was only the second time Daryl was on the internet. Marcia was a novice as well. So you two knew about as much about computers as I did, right? Started yeah. platonic? Yes. Now, we have a record for this show. Daryl's phone bill is now $1,500. <laughs> and Sally, mine is not much less than that. We got to beat them. Daryl has been trying to get a job in Green Bay, Wisconsin to be with Marcia. Shall I help you? Any, what, what do you do? Sure. What do you do for a living? I'm, I have a degree in biology. Okay, a biologist in Green in Bay, Wisconsin. If you can give this man a job, let us know. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Gwendolyn Goldsby Grant to the show. Dr. Grant is, uh, here's her credentials. She's a psychologist. She's the author of The Best Kind of Loving. She's a special friend to our show, and her daughter has just become a veterinarian. <laughs> I got in all the important credentials yes. at once. You have been listening to the stories of these couples. Can you tell us about each one? Let's start with Bill and Kimberly. They were married, divorced, somebody got in the middle. Do, what do they need to do to get married again? And does that happen very often? Do people divorce each other and then go and to the... remarry? Oh, yeah. yes, that, that happens. And, and there's a saying, love is better the second time around. <laughs> so, you know, one, of, one of... I've written about long-distance love in my column in Essence magazine. One of the things I found out is that for it to be a success, they have to be equally committed to the relationship. It isn't going to work if one is committed. No. Dwayne said it best, and he's, he said, we will make it work. And I thought that was very interesting here. <laughs> that, now, if you're going to talk, what do they need to do? Well, let's finish with them first. To make, they're both committed. It mm -hmm. looks like they're committed. Mm -hmm. One of the things they need to do is get all, all the outside affair, interference out of it. It was mother before that yeah. interfered, and she made the decision to, uh, for, to divorce him. 
So one of the things I ask people who are in long distance relationships, get other people out of it because the only two people who are directly affected are those on the other end of the long distance line. Okay, so they have to make the rules. One of the rules you have to make is how you're going to handle this long distance love. Because sometimes it's, uh, if you can't be with the one you love, you love the one you're with, it has to be eliminated. Okay, and you have to lay down your own rules for your relationship. The two of you, what's going to be? Right, and, 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 and mono sexual monogamy has to be a part of it, especially with sexually transmitted diseases. I agree. Boy, I think that's right. Now let's go to Michael and Yolanda. This, yeah. you, did you watch when they were talking? This is a pretty complicated oh, story here. Oh, Yolanda is muy bonita. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yolanda is a very beautiful young woman. And I think her beauty is on the inside. And I think that's what Michael sees more than anything else. Her inside beauty, because I know there are plenty of beauties that's true, that's in true. Southern California. Yeah. That's so, true. Yeah. Am I talking right? Yeah. See there? <laughs> the only thing is, see, and that's a problem right. because I see so much inside her. Yes. Okay. It's it's it's, it's scary for me to yes. get involved in another relationship. Uh, uh, seriously, uh, I am Michael, very scared about well, that. Well, why why do you think? Why are you afraid, Michael? You think because? Okay, let me. Because let me, you let me think of love afraid, and you think I am failure. Afraid, I am afraid of getting involved in a relationship and mm -hmm. having that woman, mm -hmm. having that woman come down on me and giving me a hard time about what I can do and what I can't do. Mm -hmm. I am an independent person, oh, and that okay, way, Michael, oh, you know, know what you're and doing? I have built up my, Michael, I have built up my, my, Michael, my you're finances carrying baggage. My one of the, and and I, one of the things I said in my book, the best kind of loving, is that you've got to get rid of the baggage. You can't carry the baggage from all those past experiences into this experience because you will damage it. On the airplane, I met a... Uh, this is called damage control, by the way. Uh, 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 <laughs> a, a, a stewardess told me on the airplane, they were both stewards, she said, you got to let her make a room for her contribution. Right. And one of the things I have a problem with, I've got to admit it, I have a problem with leaving room for a contribution. Right. Okay, I don't allow somebody to come into my life and want to who wants to contribute to contribute. I lock yeah. up. Yeah. So long distance with Michael isn't the problem because if she were there, he'd have the same problem. So the problem is for Michael to start working on Michael what? in terms of uh, getting rid of pain, okay? And that's what you're carrying, a lot of pain. I've tried to get with her. Mm -hmm. I have tried. I have tried. And, and unfortunately, the distance between us and the time separation between because she seems to keep running away. No, don't. <laughs> no, she says no. She's not running away. Every time, I, every time, well, every time. Let me get you. to the kissy poos and the internet when we return. Dr. Grant, what yes. about our other couples? I think that Kim and David are still very young. Can they be that young and really have a relationship? Oh, these young people heard a different drummer. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no fair. And, and, this, and, this time, and this time, the British are coming, and they're coming for love. Uh, and I like the idea. I think. Uh, they don't do this in England, so that's going to blow their mind. <laughs> Let, let's get to the, the this couple here, making out like bandits. Uh, you know, one, one of the things I found out in long-distance relationships, it separates the men from the boys, okay? Men begin to operate from their brains and their hearts rather than their hormones. Hmm? So therefore, I think Michael represents that kind of person. And I think one of the things we... Uh, uh, Dwayne, sorry. <laughs> she straightened me right out. <laughs> this is Dwayne. <laughs> and Dwayne, to me, represents that kind of person because he brings this relationship on a higher level. I think so, too. But, you know, she's going in the Air Force and he's going to the police academy. They've got a long haul. Yeah, and a big the Air bill. Force and the police academy. Yeah, he says he can make it work. He's got to deal with it. That's well, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to dip in into your life, say, eight months from now. Gwendolyn and I will dip in yeah. and find out what's happening. What about surfing the internet or all that uh, kind of you know, stuff? Look at the wonderful person you can find on the internet. Oh, can you, you man? You can find Mark. Right. And then one of the things I love about this guy is that he takes her, takes her as a unit. I mean, she has three children. And there, there, there are a lot of guys out there that said, I don't want this extra baggage of the kids. Right. I love her kids. And he calls them the unit. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. And he likes the idea He's that a scientist. there are men who will take on ready-made families. There are. 
There just aren't yeah. a lot of her, them. Her kids is there friends. anything we should say? I didn't know you did a column, in essence. Yes. Is there anything we should say about uh, being geographically undesirable? You know, uh, there are now an estimated 700,000 uh, commuter marriages in this country. And because we have the armed forces, we have oh, the yeah. Bosnia, we have separations all the time. We've got to learn how to take care of loneliness. We've got to learn how to take care of this anxiety of separation. One of the things you can do is not just on the telephone all the time, you can send tapes voice tapes, videotapes. Yes. You can do voice prints with a photograph. You press it and it says, good morning, darling. There, there are voice prints, if you've ever seen that. And you write letters. Don't forget to write letters. Oh, people don't do that anymore, and they I've, really should. Uh, I've got I boxes. Yeah. We've, we've got, got boxes, boxes of letters. And don't forget yeah. the, the, the big surprises. I mean, have a, have a pizza delivery. Uh, to the person that you love, or have some food delivered to their home, or send a pet. Uh, a bird, since my daughter's a veterinarian, or a pooch, or a dog to keep them company rather than a man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your advice, eh, Gwendolyn? Right so I think we'll close the show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you for your usually terrific advice, except for pets, sending a pet. <laughs> <laughs> and for our for couples, we health. will find out what's going on with you. The best of luck in the future. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you.